No, sir. Don't, don't say it. I don't want to hear it. What about the broken necks and the rotted flesh and the throats of the three I victims? I told you I didn't want to hear it. Besides, not official. Not official? Who cares whether it's official or not? Look, you I'll, know it and I know it. I'll buy the possibility that some guy, a killer that strangled the six women in 1952. But a man, Carl, not some kind of super dead man. That's the way he has been described more than once. I don't care if he's been described that way more than twice. Let me finish my life. Where are you going? Hi there. Got a moment? What are you doing here? Just wanted to talk with you, man. What about? The elixir of life. <sighs> Go to journalism school, my father said. It's a good, sound, down-to-earth profession. Don't you want to hear this? What I like to do is raise tulips for a living, but there's not too much of a demand. Suppose an elixir of life could actually be produced. How do you think it would work? I mean, do you think, do you think that, that one treatment of it would cause everlasting youth? Or do you think that, that uh, well, periodic treatments might be required, say... Wait a minute, wait a minute, don't tell me, let me guess. Every 21 years? Good guess. Now, suppose at the end of this 21-year period, the man who took the magic elixir began looking a little... Uh, moldy, you know, kind of like what he really did look like, actually, a 100-year-old man. Suppose he had to make a new batch of the elixir and had to make it within a period of 18 days. Suppose that the one ingredient he didn't have was blood. Very good. Suppose he had to go out late every night to get that blood. Suppose he got it from the basis of his victim's skulls with a hypodermic needle. And suppose he was so strong that when he strangled his victims, he crushed their necks. And suppose his fingertips were starting to decompose and left fragments of them on the women's throats. And suppose you flap your arms and fly right out that door. And suppose you check on the victim and you discover what the word fat means, Cole Jack. Fat! Fat! Gladys Weems, one of the two other belly dancers at Omar's tent. Charisma beauty? Who are you? Who's there, Wilma? Uh, Miss Beauty? Yes, I am. Uh, excuse me? I beg your pardon? My name is Cole Shack, and I'm with the Daily Chronicle. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Would you like to talk? Uh, no, 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 thank you very much. What I'd like to ask you is, uh... She was... Uh, Something less than helpful, and I soon departed. Made a bit uneasy by the looks directed at me by her husband, Wilma Crankheimer. 